Carl's questions on the MCAT can feel pretty unpredictable, but they actually follow clear patterns. Sometimes that's just really tough to point out. This series is all about breaking those down, and in this video, we're going to point out two of the most common, and I'm gonna show you how to answer them systematically. Pattern number five, I think, at this point, is called the passage implies, and this is probably the question type or pattern that I see the most common. A lot of times it will literally start with the words or the phrase, the passage implies that blank. And these questions are gonna ask you to take the next step, the next logical step from the arguments or the main idea that was made in the passage and kind of, they're really asking you what was suggested in the passage? What would be reasonable for us to assume? Now the tricky thing is that sometimes it's just going to straight up ask you what is a reasonable assumption, what is, what's likely implied, or sometimes it'll ask you to apply this to a specific scenario. Those questions would be worded differently, obviously. The first one would say the passage implies that blank, and the second would say, given passage assertions or assumptions, which of these responses to the scenario would the author take, or something like that. They're both just asking you what's the next logical step from the argument that you have already read. Now, when trying to recognize these questions, you're gonna be looking for words like implies, suggests, most likely means, sometimes would agree with. All these could be a tip that this could be a the passage implies question pattern. So that's how you recognize it. Now, talking about how to answer that common question type systematically is a little bit more nuanced. So let's jump right into it. First, you have to identify the idea that they're testing on. So is that an argument? Is that the main idea? Is that tone? Is that one specific sentence that they reference within the passage? Locate the key topic, the key idea. Now for some of you, that might literally mean you're going back through and finding it in the passage. And at IFD, we don't teach that for car strategies, right? If you followed us, then you know we're all about simplifying it down to just a main idea and answering with that. So that's gonna be kind of going back to this mental bank that you've built up of, what are we actually testing on here? Then you're gonna ask yourself what was stated and what was not stated in that argument. The correct answer is not going to be stated word for word in the passage, right? But it will be supported by that. And what's really important about answering this question type or pattern correctly is watching out for the traps. So some of the most common distractors with this question pattern are going too far. That is by far the most common one. So if the passage is implying that a universal basic income is good for everybody, going too far would be saying that the author wants to implement socialism. And I could see how your little MCAT brain could relate the two, right? But that's not what the author said. So what the author said is what the author said. You're welcome to take one additional step, but you cannot take two steps. A lot of times the wrong answer choices have taken two steps away from home base. So just keep that in mind. And whenever you're trying to make an assumption to answer a question right on cars, you can take one step. You have to keep a foot on home plate. Another common distractor is when answer choices, they, they seem possible or they almost seem plausible, but they just lack support. And another way to phrase that is, this one makes sense to me. You know, you read an answer choice and you're like, well, this is what I would do, or I think that this makes sense. But remember, you're answering the questions from the vantage point of the author. And this is, I think this is probably so that whenever you're taking care of patients in the future, you can answer questions and you can think the way that they think. Because a lot of times it helps you with different diagnoses. And a lot of the stuff you deal with as a doctor is like social situations and things like that. And then the last distractor, and I don't think this one's as common, but sometimes they will include a reasonable and a logical next step, but that next step is in the wrong direction, meaning it might contradict the main idea. And if that's the case, the passage is never going to imply a contradiction with the main idea, so you can cross that one out, right? So I'm gonna read you an example question that I wrote, and it's gonna lack some of the full depth of this exercise because you don't have a passage, but this is what it would look like. The passage describes an author's disillusionment with modern art. Based on this passage, the passage most likely implies that the author would A, support stricter definitions of what qualifies as art, B, believe modern artists lack technical skills, C, advocate for removing abstract pieces from museums, or D, think public perception of modern art is irrelevant. So you could imagine all of those different things are probably discussed within the passage to some point, but the question is asking, what would the author argue for? What would be reasonable from 
what the author's main argument, the main concept being tested, which in this question is the idea around the disillusionment of modern art. So the big takeaway is that if it's not suggested in the passage, if there's zero support, it's not the correct answer, and then you've always got to keep a foot on home base. That's probably the most common question type or question pattern in cars. If you can get that, you're on your way to a good score. Before we go to pattern number two, my name is John. I'm a fourth year medical student. Before coming back to medical school, I worked a couple years for some of the national MCAT companies as a personal tutor or a private tutor. And then I went on to work on some of like the course creation, content creation, marketing stuff that they did at the national level. I decided I wasn't very fulfilled with that. And so I ended up coming back to medical school to be a surgeon. And I started this YouTube channel and the associated business with my little sister, Maggie. She's a third year medical student. And we create all these free resources because we think that all of our future colleagues should have access to high quality tutoring from professional MCAT tutors. It's our hope that all you'll need is the free stuff and you'll crush the MCAT. You'll get scholarships to medical school because your MCAT score is so high and you'll move on past it. But if not, if you're like me and you realize that you needed some professional help, that you'll look at us and the links in our description as a thank you for all the free teachings. So pattern number two, this question pattern is called determinations, conclusions, it's a work in progress. We'll call it concluded. And this is asking what can and cannot be logically concluded from the passage. So this is a little bit different from the last question blueprint where it was saying what could likely be implied because the implication is basically you're keeping one foot on home base so you can take one step. But now they're asking for the conclusion. So this is going to be, you're going all the way around the bases, right? They want to know the end goal of the argument. And so you have to look for an argument that's safe, that is supported all throughout the passage. So this is really leaning on the main idea here, right? Because you have to have a strong argument if you're saying that this is the conclusion. Now for recognizing these questions, they almost always include the word concluded, conclusions, determines, some kind of synonym of one of those words, right? So you'll be able to recognize it by that. So whenever we're answering these questions, talking about how to answer these systematically, we're going straight to the answer choices and we're looking for the most supported answer choice to answer the question that's being asked. Now they can ask conclusions about uh, the passage as a whole in which you would use the main idea, right? Or they could ask conclusions about a specific scenario in which you may have to use an argument or tone to answer that question. But regardless how they phrase it, you have to answer this question with dense passage support. This is not a time to kind of stray and say, well, maybe this is what they think. This is the time to say, my passage supports answer choice B. I'm going to click answer choice B. The next step in answering these systematically is you really want to avoid like possibly true answers here. It kind of builds off the first step. If you read an answer choice and you think this could be true, but it's not proven, it's not the correct answer. They're asking for a conclusion, meaning that they want concrete evidence. If you wanna think about this in medical terms, it's like they're asking for the diagnosis. And if you're asking for the diagnosis, then you better have a lot of evidence to support that diagnosis before you go off and say some random disease that you've only read about in a textbook and you've never seen it, right? So this is kind of like, these questions make me think about something you hear a lot on internal medicine rounds, which is that, you know, if you hear hooves, think horses, right? Don't, don't try to get cute with these. This is usually either a main idea, a tone, or like a big argument that's gonna be the correct answer here. So what do the incorrect answer choices look like here? A lot of times the distracting answer choices will make an assumption beyond what's actually stated. You'll probably notice a common theme between that and the distractor in the last question uh, pattern. It's, that's true, they're the exact same thing. A lot of times they will make an assumption that feels reasonable to you, but that is not supported by passage evidence. Another thing that they do, it's not exclusive to this question pattern, but it's more so in this one than others, I think is that they will twist a specific piece of passage support or evidence and make it into like an overgeneralization. So if the author is arguing that basketball is good for surgeons because it's a team sport, then an overgeneralization would be to say that all sports are good for surgeons, even like solo sports, like singles tennis or bowling or something like that. That would be an overgeneralization. 
because the, the crux of that argument is that basketball is good for surgeons because basketball is a team sport, so you get used to playing as a team. So that's the real argument, right? So basically taking an example or an argument and honing in on the wrong portion of it and then making an overgeneralization off of that. So let's look at an example question I drafted up for this. The passage describes a study showing that moderate coffee consumption is linked to improved concentration. Based on this, which of the following conclusions is best supported? A, people who drink coffee daily will have the best concentration. B, moderate caffeine intake has cognitive benefits. C, caffeine causes increased alertness in all people. D, drinking excessive coffee leads to concentration problems. Now realistically, the way that you would probably see this question on your MCAT, it would just say, which of the following conclusions is best supported? And then within the passage itself, it would describe this study that showed that moderate coffee consumption is linked to improved concentration. I just kind of wrote it all in the question so it made more sense to you. But you can see by looking at it that B is the only one that doesn't like go too far or make too, too much of a promise. Like you look at A, it says that the coffee, daily coffee drinkers concentration is always better and that's not true, right? We don't like strong answer choices on the MCAT. C is the same thing, increasing alertness in all people. And then D just completely contradicts the question itself. So that's not the best question in the world. But the takeaway is that if the passage don't prove it, it ain't a conclusion. You need to stick to the conclusions that follow the passage and are supported heavily, meaning lean on your main idea for these. We've been running this YouTube channel and this business for going on four years now. We remained pretty strategically quiet about cars. And the reason for that is because we wanna make sure that everything that we make and publish and sell, especially sell, is effective. Like not only do you put your trust in us with your money, and I know that like, you know, our courses aren't this expensive, but some of like the big name courses might be five or $10,000. Like that's a ton of money and that's a ton of trust. But to me, what's even more important than the money that you spend is the time and the money that you lose out on by failing the MCAT, right? So the average physician's salary is probably like three or $400,000, and of course it varies by specialty, but it, it's a lot. It's a lot more than five grand, right? And so we take that seriously, because whenever you're studying with us, then you're putting your trust that our materials will prevent you from sitting out of medical school another year, which is another year that you're not caring for patients, which is, you know, hundreds of patients not getting care, and that's hundreds of thousands of dollars not in your pocket. And so I only, the only thing I'd ever found that worked for cars consistently was private tutoring. Now, I just don't love private tutoring because it's super expensive, it's super labor intensive, and then we're having to like coordinate schedules, and then between Maggie and I, we could only help like two people at a time. It just really wasn't efficient. So we were just kind of quiet about cars because we didn't have a good solution to it. But now we do. It's our Cars Unlimited Tutor. Essentially what it is is we from scratch created an AI system over the course of two years that's designed to write passages and questions exactly like the AAMC and it's designed to tutor you through the three drills that we would take students through in every single CARS tutoring session and respond exactly like Maggie or myself would to your inputs on the drills. And at the end, it includes unlimited passage practice with questions associated. And so all those questions are written based off of these blueprints that I'm teaching through. All the passages have been uh, written by Maggie and I's guidelines for what a AMC passage entails, and I think we nailed it. We're, we are still working tirelessly on making this perfect, because I mean, I just, I think that this is what the MCAT industry is missing, right? We have great practice questions through UWorld. We've got, you know, most companies have a good book uh, for all the content. We teach the content really quickly, if you're into that, with our high yield stuff. But I think that a good interactive cars drills without having to pay, you know, $100, $200 an hour for private tutoring is what the industry is missing. And that's what we've created. So if you want to learn how to think like the AMC does, if you want to learn how to approach these passages like Maggie and myself do to make this more systematic and you want practice created by professional tutors, current medical students, soon to be resident doctor, check out the link in the description. It's called Cars Unlimited or Cars U. I think Cars U is cooler, but we'll see what sticks. Regardless, it's there if you need it. Take it from a guy that didn't get accepted into medical school twice because of my MCAT score before I finally figured it out. Whatever you need to do to get into medical school, it's worth it. Cause I could be like almost halfway done with my residency now. If I just would have bit the bullet 
an undergraduate and studied properly the first time. But then I wouldn't have all these lessons to tell you all on the internet. So it all works out in the end. But regardless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.